peace. I know they'll call me a devil. Yeah. I know they'll nail me to the cross. On, Amen. Yeah. He knew that before he came. Right. He said he stood before the leaders and said, For this cause right. came I into the world. Yeah. Amen. He knew what he came for. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My, my, my was to give his life, his life's blood for you yes, sir. and for me. Come on. Amen. Come on. We've been talking about reaping and sowing the last two weeks. Yeah. Probably going to finish up on it today. But our foundational scripture has been one that. If I'm not mistaken, Brother Beal read this Tuesday night whenever he was preaching. Hallelujah. Be not deceived. This is in Galatians, the 6th chapter, the 7th, 8th, and ninth verse. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. On, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Oh, amen. Now this is a promise. Yes. This is God's Word. Come on, brother. This is a spiritual law that always has been. Come brother Bill. From the beginning of time, you can find it in the book of Genesis. Come on, first you can find it over there in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Amen? Come on. All the way through the history of man. Yeah. And you know, we've got different ways of saying it. The world says what goes around comes around. That's a fancy way of putting it. Yeah. The world calls it karma. Oh. Amen? Yeah. Meaning that sooner or later you'll get yours. Yeah. Amen? Come on. God calls it reaping and sowing. Amen? Yes, sir. And He will not be mocked. Trust me, right. the seed that you plant come on. will eventually come up. Come on, Brother Billy, preach to us. There's a song that Jeff and Sherry Easter sung. I don't know who wrote it. Uh -huh. It says, you reap just what you sow. What you plant one day will grow. Come on, brother. Remember the things that you do sooner or later will come back to you. So be gentle and be kind. You'll get the same thing somewhere in time. Yes, sir. I want you to know you always reap what you sow. Amen. Glory to God. Be not deceived. God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Come on. Amen. Yes, sir. We started out talking about Brother Isaac. Amen. Mm -hmm. Over there in the book of Genesis. Found himself in the land of Gerar in a great famine gripping the land and choking yep. the very life out of it. Oh. And he's pondering perhaps the thoughts of going somewhere where the famine wasn't. Yeah. Maybe I'll go down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But God speaks to him and tells him, don't go down to Egypt. Yeah. Stay where I've got you and plant seed right here in the land of Gerar. Oh, right here in the land of famine. We've been talking about reaping yeah. during the time of famine. And we've been learning that if you want a crop during the time of famine, Brother Bill, you've got to plant a seed oh, during the time of famine. Amen? Oh. We spend too much time trying to decide whether we can afford to plant or not when the truth of the matter is we can't afford not to plant. Amen? Yeah. So Isaac listens to the voice of the Lord and he plants seed right there in the land of famine. And you know what happens? Oh, here's a big shot for you. He reaped what he sowed. Amen. He planted seed and the Lord blessed him with a crop. Right. Right where he was at. Amen. Whatever season you're in, don't cut off your giving to God. Right. Amen. I know many times over the years people have told this preacher, once I can afford to, I'm going to start giving. Yeah. Once I get my big check, I'm going to give something. Uh, once I get my better job, then I'll be able to afford to tithe. Yeah. Amen? Then I'll be able to afford to give. And I told you this last week, I'll tell you this again today. If you won't give when you got little, I doubt very seriously you're going to give when you got much. Amen. You hear what I said? Yeah. If you don't give when you got a little, oh, and I've ran across people like that, can't afford to. Probably all of us have stood in that position before trying to decide whether we could afford to give or not. Yes. Then we talked about that little widow woman. Had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. And we talked about how that in the carnal way of thinking, she couldn't afford to give. Right. She done told the man of God, Brother Sleece, I'm fixing to fix a cake. Me and my son are going to eat it. And then we're going to die. 
Because there's a famine in the land. The man of God speaks to her and says, you go ahead and make the cake just like you said, but change your plans a little bit. Bring me a little cake first. Then go and make for you and your son. Now wait a minute! The devil said, wait a minute, old lady. If you make a little cake and give it to this man of God, you ain't going to have none. Yeah. All she had was enough to make a cake to start with. Yeah. But the prophet says, you go and do like you said. Take your little bit of meal, take your little bit of oil, and make a cake, and then you bring it to me. In all way of, all manner of thinking in our carnal mind, we're thinking, well, that's it. There's no more. The barrel is empty. The cruise of oil has no more drops of oil in it. She goes in obedience to the Word of God, and she makes a little cake, and she brings it, and she gives it to the man of God. And then you know what this old crazy woman does? She goes back to that empty meal barrel. Yeah. She goes back to that empty cruise of oil. Come on, preach. And you know what happens, Brother Bill? It ain't empty. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I said it ain't empty. Yeah. Why? Because she planted during the time of famine. She gave regardless of the circumstance. It didn't matter if it looked like it made any sense or not. I told you most of the time it don't make sense to your carnal mind to obey God's Word. Yeah. Amen? But then His Spirit kicks in. Amen. See, this woman had her back to the wall. God had already set everything in place for this woman to be desperate enough to trust God. Sometimes you got to get desperate before you trust God, Brother Bill. Yes. Amen. Sometimes our old carnal man, we have to get desperate. Well, I've tried everything else. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. I've tried everything else. I guess I tried Jesus. Come on. Oh, I wish church would get a hold of that today. Amen. They tried everything but Jesus. Right. Amen. True. They try an entertainment. Right. They try an education. Yeah. They try everything they can get hold of. Come on. Amen. This little woman tried God. Yeah. I'll obey His word. All right. oh. And guess what? Right. Be not deceived. God was not mocked. That 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 woman sowed, she also so reaped. Real. Amen. Come on. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Amen. So we've been talking about giving some. Amen. Yeah. I know it ain't a popular subject with a lot of people today, although it seems to be doing pretty good for the folks on TV. Yeah. yeah. Amen. It is. Right. I saw a list of things this week that a certain preacher, if I named her name, you would know who I'm talking about. We talked about it a couple of years ago, I think. Was under investigation because of her $23,000 commode, her $17,000 couch, her $15,000 whatever it was desk, her antique clock and vases and all of that. Mm. My question to that is, what in the world does that have to do with the work of God? Right. Amen. Amen. True. So we see a lot of people getting rich yeah. off of your money. Wrong. People planting in the wrong ground, planting yeah. in the wrong place. You know, people say, and we haven't touched on this a lot, but we probably should have. Mm. People say, well, I'll give it, and then what, they, what happens to it after that ain't my business. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. One of the things that a farmer makes sure when he goes out to plant a crop, he makes sure the ground's good that he's planting the seed in. Right. It's your responsibility to make sure the ground is good that you're planting the seed in. Amen. That's true. Amen. Because you may not like what you get back. All right. I read this week a thing. It said it was a question, actually, an answer thing. It said, "What is worse? What is worse than a wolf in sheep's clothing?" And the answer to it was a wolf in shepherd's. Clothing. Yeah. That's a good one. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. That's a good one. What's worse than a wolf in sheep's clothing is a wolf in shepherd's clothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. We got a lot of wolves oh, in God. shepherd's clothing this morning. Yeah. Raven and wolves standing behind pulpits using the word of God as propaganda using the word of God as a as a tool to manipulate people and to get their money. Come on, brother Bill. And I use the Word of God there as a quote lightly because that most of them don't have the Word of God. They have something else. Yeah, that's right. But what they call the Word of God, yeah, that's true. what they call the Bible, yeah. and they're using things to manipulate the people to give, mm -hmm. to plant in a bad ground. Yeah. Well, they're writing their own Bible. That's exactly right. 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 So don't like the... Don't like the 
you know, the, don't the like the, the truth, so they're going to change it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's still allowing the truth to change them, Brother Bill. Right. Man wants to change the truth. Make it a little easier for them to deal with. Yeah. Make it a little easier for them to walk. Amen. Amen. Make it easier for them. My, my, my. Make it easier to swallow. Yeah. Amen. So we talked about Isaac and we talked about the widow woman. And remember, we said, we've said this more than once while we were doing this teaching, that there are a lot of things that you can sow. Right. We've said you can sow mercy. Right. You can sow favor. You can sow forgiveness. You can sow righteousness. Right. You can sow evil. You can sow sin. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Write this Scripture down. Matthew, the 5th chapter, the 7th verse. If you've heard us over the last two weeks saying that you could sow mercy and reap mercy, and you've scratched your head and said, well, that preacher's really out there and that doesn't even make any sense. I want to give you a scripture for that. Jesus sits here on the hill and He's teaching them to be attitudes. And you know what He says to them? In Matthew, the 5th chapter and the 7th verse, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You hear that this morning? Planning mercy. Sowing mercy, you will reap mercy. Amen? The merciful shall be the ones that obtain mercy. How about forgiveness? We said you could sow forgiveness. Amen? Right. Jesus would say this in Matthew the 6th chapter, beginning in the ninth verse, in what is called the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, actually He's teaching the disciples how to pray, Therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Here it comes, folks. Hold on to your seat. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, right. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Right. Is that pretty plain, ain't it? Yes, sir. I like it. I like the Bible. I like the old King James Version. Amen. It's all pretty plain. It's That's all, all I got. It's, yeah. all got. it's pretty plain. Oh, at that break, if you need somebody to explain that to you, you're just stupid. Okay. Amen? <laughs> forgive and you'll be forgiven. Yeah, come on. Don't forgive and you will not receive forgiveness. That's right. Amen? So forgiveness, you will reap forgiveness. Somebody repeat after me. If I forgive, I will be forgiven. If I do not forgive, I will not be forgiven. I didn't write the book. Amen? That's what it says. That's what it says in black and white. Those words came from the mouth of God. Yeah. Amen? You forgive, you'll be forgiven. If you don't, then you cut off forgiveness. All right. Amen? Think about that. Think about the person you're finding it hard to bring yourself to forgive and realize how it ain't just affecting that person. It affects you more than it does them. Yeah. True that. Oh, yeah. You reap what you sow. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If I plant tomatoes, I will get tomatoes. Amen? If I plant corn, I will get corn. If I plant mercy, I will get mercy. If I plant forgiveness, I will get forgiveness. We're not talking about earning the favor of God. We're not talking about earning the forgiveness of God. We're talking about a spiritual law that God will not interfere with. You reap what you sow. Always has been like that. Yes, sir. Amen? True. Always has been like that. I know you want to jump up out of your pew when we talk about tithing and we talk about giving and we talk about talk about reaping what you sow and you want to jump up out of your pew and holler, I'm not under the curse of the law. I'm not under the curse of the law. You're just too tight to give to God is what's wrong with you. If you'd really read the book for yourself, you'd realize that this giving thing we're talking about has been all the way from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. Jesus said Himself, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Give and it shall be given. Shaken together, pressed down, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. Come on. Giving. True. Reaping and sowing. Reaping and sowing. God don't have to curse you. All He has to do, Brother Bill, is allow you to grow your own crop. 
Think about that. He don't have to open up the windows of heaven and pour judgment out on you. Not that He won't. Because He still judges. He still pours out judgment. But Sister Nancy, all God has to do is allow you to plant the seed and reap the crop that you plant. Think about it. Think about that. Whenever we saw the airplanes go into the Twin Towers and we saw the death and the mass destruction that took place on September the 11th. And all of the turmoil. People begin to say things like that it was God pouring out His judgment. And I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it was. I'm just telling you this. You cannot continue to sow bad seed and not reap some of what you've sown. Amen. Amen. True. So you can sow mercy. Right. You can sow forgiveness. Yeah. Amen. Come on. I couldn't think of a better example of this than the one that we find in Matthew the 18th chapter. Matthew the 18th chapter, beginning of the 23rd verse. The Bible says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king, which, to, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him. 10,000 talents. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked on this before. It's a lot of money. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded that he be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had right. and payment to be made. And we find this man that served the Bible says, fell down yeah. and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. Yeah. I will pay thee all. Yeah. And the Bible says the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and he loosed him and he forgave him of his debt. And this servant gets up and he goes on his merry way. And oh, I'm so thankful. I was under such a burden. How many people ever paid a bill off? And you just know how great that feels. Amen. Amen. Still working on mine. But anyway, some of you have paid a bill off. Amen. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, I just feel like I'm out from under a load. Maybe you got your house paid for. Maybe you got your car paid for. Maybe you paid the doctor bill finally out where you had a kid 28 years ago and it took you that long to get the bill paid. <laughs> Hallelujah. But something you've done has caused this release. And this man goes off and he's feeling good. He's experienced forgiveness. He's experienced compassion. Let's see what he does. Let's see what this, what this saint does. Amen. Amen. He says, but that same servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him. And he took him by the throat. And he said, pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet. And he besought him saying, listen, have patience. Well, have we heard these words somewhere before, Brother Bill? Have patience. I will pay thee all. So this man that fell down and asked for mercy and received mercy, asked for forgiveness and received forgiveness, asked for patience and received patience. Let's see what he does. Let's see what kind of seed he plants here. But he would not. But he went and he cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So we find this man, what's he doing? He's not planning any forgiveness. Well, what happens to him, Brother Billy? I'm glad you asked me. Then his Lord, listen, verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. They go back and they tell the Lord that it forgave this man. You know that man that you forgave all of that money that he owed you? Well, he was out here and this guy owed him 15 cents or something, whatever it was. And he wouldn't forgive him. He took a hold of him. He threw him into prison. He's planting some seed. He's getting ready to reap what he sowed. All right. Listen to this. And when the Lord had heard this, the Bible says in verse 32, Then his Lord, after that he called him, and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Yeah. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Oh, listen to this. What's this got to do with me, Brother Billy? So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. You hear that? Amen. Here we find this man, and what kind of seed did he sow? Unforgiveness. Judgment. Amen. What's he reap? Unforgiveness. And judgment. 
Oh, think about that. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever men sow with that shall he also reap. Amen. If you can't bring yourself to forgive others, you are doing far more damage than you realize. Right. Because if you do not plant forgiveness, you do not reap forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Oh, you reap just what you sow, yeah. what you plant. One day will grow. Right. Remember the things that you do. Sooner or later will come back to you. Yeah. You see what happened to this man, don't you? Is that a plain enough picture for us this morning? Right. Amen. Amen. Did you know this morning you can sow righteousness? Yeah. Hosea 10 and 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Amen. Break up your fallow ground, for it is, thine, it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. You hear what he said? Sow righteousness, and righteousness will be dealt back to you. You reap what you sow. Amen. James 3 and 18 says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. In peace of them that make peace. You can sow righteousness today. Paul would tell Timothy this in 2 Timothy 1 and 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, did you hear what Paul said to Timothy? First this faith, this righteousness, Brother Bill, dwelt in your grandma. Then the seed that she planted, she saw it come to fruition in the life of her daughter. And then the righteousness that she sowed, the life of faith that she lived. Timothy, I see it in you today. Oh, hallelujah. Did you know you can sow righteousness and reap the benefits thereof today? Right. My, 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 my. That we find in Timothy's family a lineage of righteous and people living by faith that planted righteousness and reaped the benefits thereof. Amen? Yeah. We're seeing today the benefits. We're seeing the, the crop of a lot of mom and daddies that sow wickedness instead of righteousness. Amen. Amen. That's true. But Paul here, he tells Timothy, he said, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, see, Lois had sold some righteous living, and she had seen it carried on through her daughter, Eunice. Exactly. And Eunice had sold some right living, amen, some walk of faith, yeah. and now it was carried on through her son, Timothy. Mm. When are we going to realize that the seeds that we are planting today will come up on one of our tomorrows? Come on. Amen. Come on. The bad seed that is planted today sooner or later will take roots downward and bear corrupt fruit upward. Yeah. The same thing with righteousness. It will take roots downward. It will bear righteous fruit upward. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also Amen. reap. When you sow favor, write these down. You reap favor. Yeah. When you sow mercy, you reap mercy. When you sow forgiveness, you reap forgiveness. Oh, my, my, my. Now, you remember that scripture that we talked about sowing righteousness? We just read it in Hosea 10 and 12. Sow yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. The very next verse says this right here. See, righteousness ain't the only thing you can sow. Right. Hosea 10 and 13 says you have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. So you not only can sow and reap righteousness this morning, Brother Bill, but you can sow, listen to me America, you can sow and reap sin and wickedness today as well. Amen. Right. I told you last week I was going to tell you what's wrong with America, what's happened to America. The Bible says in Hosea 8 and 7, For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. If, if so be it yield, the strangers shall swallow it up. Yeah. If you do produce anything, the strangers will swallow it up. You know who I thought about when I read that strangers part there? China. Well, brother, brother, what in the world has China got to do with America? Oh, there's nothing to, other than the fact they hold the note on it. Amen. We own trillions of dollars. If they called in the note today, we could not pay them. What do you think would happen? You ever had a house repossessed before? Yes, I 
You ever had somebody come get your car because they own the note and you couldn't pay it? I know we don't like to think about it. Our forefathers, if possible, they'd roll over in their grave to know we got into bed with communists, Amen. atheists. Right. A nation that doesn't even believe there's a God. Right. Help. Even if you bring forth any fruit, the strangers will come and take it. Right. America has sown to the wind and they will reap the whirlwind. Yes. She will have no stalk in the bud. She'll yield no meal. And if it does bud, if it does anything, America don't own it. Amen? Right. The strangers will come and take it. Amen. Listen to me this morning. This ain't going to be as long as the other ones that we've preached, but this is going to be about as important as anything we've ever said. When you take prayer out of school, well, let me back up for a minute. When you elect ungodly, unmoral men and put them in position to make decisions, what do you think you're going to reap from that? What do you think happened to Israel when they begged for a king and God said, no, I want to be your king. Yeah. No, we demand a man. You got one, Saul. And at the time he was done, they wish they'd never seen him. Because of his rebellion and the wicked seed that he sowed. Amen. So what has America done? We've elected ungodly men yeah. and put them in place of power. Greedy men. Mm -hmm. Men that would rob from their own mama. Yeah. To further their men greedy for power. True. Men greedy for money. Exactly. We put them in position. Men that have no regard for life. Amen. Or the sanctity thereof. True. Many of them that don't even believe in God. Right. Right. Come on, brother. And we, we, we put a, a if he ain't a Muslim, which I don't know that he's a Muslim, I'm not saying he's a Muslim, he is certainly sympathetic to the Muslim cause. Yes, sir. All you have to do is read the man's quotes, but we've sent him in a position of power. Right. And then people wonder, well, what's going on? Uh, I don't understand what's going on. Well, let me tell you what's going on. When you elect ungodly men and you put them in power over you, right. don't be shocked by the choices they make. Amen. When you take prayer out of school, and you make that when you take prayer out of school, don't be surprised when the kids start packing guns to school. Amen. When you take the Bible out of school and start handing out condoms, don't be surprised when your teenage daughters become pregnant out of wedlock. Oh, can I preach this morning about our nation? If you want to know what's wrong with her, she's reaping the corrupt seed that she has sown. You cannot take prayer out of school and legalize murdering our innocent babies and not someday have to eat from the garden that you grew. Right. Come on, Brother Billy. Preach it. Amen. Oh, I know this ain't going to be the most popular of the sermon series here. Amen. When you condone homosexuality, when you take God out of your government, yeah. when you remove the Ten Commandments off of your walls, mm -hmm. then what kind of crop do you think you're going to reap after you have sown these wicked seeds? You're going to reap one of violence, one of sin, one of death, one of destruction. Exactly. Oh, I know that's hard preaching this morning, but we couldn't leave this without getting on this. Truth anyway. Yes, sir. See, it ain't what thus saith man, it's what thus saith God. Amen. I'd like to stand up here this morning and tell you, if we get rid of Obama, our problems are over. I'd like to stand up here and tell you this morning that if we can just get a Republican in the White House, yeah. that'll solve our problems. Oh, no, 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 no. There ain't but one answer for our problems. Yeah. I don't quote Billy Graham very often. I know in his early ministry he did some hellfire and brimstone and preaching. Yeah. Later on he got a little off track. I hope he's back on track now. I don't quote him very often, but I'll quote him this morning. He said, in order to get a nation back on her feet, you must first get her on her knees. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. In order to get a nation on her feet, you must first get her back on her knees. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot continue to plant bad seed and not expect to grow a bad garden. Amen. Oh. My, my. You see, this morning the Supreme Court does not have the last say. Right. The President of the United States does not have the last say. Amen. Congress does not have the last say. That's right. God has already had the last say. Yes, sir. Come on, brother. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Yes. 
Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Come on, to us. Amen. When you expel God from your classroom, yes. you open the door to violence right. and crime and sin. True. Amen. Yes, sir. When you kicked out prayer, you kicked out God. When you kicked out the Word of God, you kicked out God. Yeah. When you took down the Ten Commandments off your walls and took them out, God followed. Come on, brother. He ain't going to bless your mess. Come on, really? Amen. Really? He ain't going to bless your mess. The only hope for America today is not an election, not a revolution, but an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival of people on their knees crying out, God, forgive us for the seed that we have sown. Yeah, really? <clears throat> forgive us. Come on, brother Billy. Forgive us. Oh my goodness. Psalms 50 and 22 says, Consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Psalms 33 and 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It doesn't take much of an imagination or very many smarts for the bill this morning. I don't have to have a degree to figure out if the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord for me to understand yeah. that cursed is the nation whose God is not the Lord. On, when you make money, you're God. Yes, sir. Whenever you make the false religions of today, you're God. Right. When you compromise for the sake of getting along, on, you will reap. The seed that you have sown. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God's word will have the last say. Yes, sir. The same God that spoke into darkness in the book of Genesis and said, Let there be light, and light came. Right. His word still applies today. Amen. The Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, all right. and all the nations that forget God. Bible. Can I say that again? The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Yeah. Oh, True. I believe it was Eliphaz that spoke to Job in the fourth chapter, the eighth verse. He said, Even as I have seen, they that, they, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Yes, sir. Did you hear that? Amen. Eliphaz said, I've seen this in my lifetime. Brothers, least they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. When you expel God and His Word, you expel morals. You expel the regard for the sanctity of life. When you plant godless seeds, you raise a godless crop. Amen. Amen. When you teach your children that there is no God, Sooner or later they get to the place where there is no wrong, there is no right. right. I can kill you without feeling anything. Amen. Because you've gotten rid of God. You've forgotten God. Right. Oh, what's that old psalm say, Brother Dave? If we forget God, right. Satan will rule. Yes. Satan will rule us. You have to look no farther than the nation of Haiti that turned their nation over to voodoo. Right. Go over there and see what kind of a nation they have. Sewer running down the middle of the streets. Living in grass huts and cardboard houses, whatever they can find. Starving to death. Why? Because they forgot God. Do you think America's so mighty she can spit in the face of God and not read that when she's sown? I don't think so. <laughs> Every nation that forgets God will be cast into hell. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't believe it. Don't care. That's what God said, not me. Guaranteed. Doesn't change the fact. You can deny it. You can spit on it. You can burn it. But God's word is eternal. Come on. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Brother be it whatsoever a nation soweth, that shall he also reap. Right. Amen. Oh my my my. What about our churches? Oh, we're talking about America. We could probably find America went off track when the church began to go off track. Yeah. Yes, Amen. Yeah. When, did the, when did America get on the toboggan slide to hell? Probably when she followed the church down the hill. Right. We've traded the Word of God for some watered down, not even a Bible. It's a perversion. It's a, not even all of God's Word. Come on, brother. We've thrown out anointed men of God yeah. and traded them in for some compromising, oh, tiptoe through the tulip preacher, educated but has no conviction. Yes, sir. 
Don't care to compromise. Yeah. Don't care to compromise. Come on. We've traded anointed men of God for people that we have set in power. Yeah. And then we wonder why the church is the way it is today. Amen. Because we've set compromising teachers in a position of yeah. power in our churches. Yeah. We no longer have a house of prayer. We have a house of hair. Yes, sir. Say it. <clears throat> Make sure my hair don't get out of place this morning. <laughs> Might mess up my hair if I get excited for the Lord. Yeah. Right. Amen. We don't have a house of prayer. We got a house of hair. Everybody worried about their hair dudes. They don't want to get all mussed up. Amen. If I thank God for old fashioned Holy Ghost filled preachers that didn't care to get mussed up. Amen. We've traded the message of Jesus for the new age teaching and doctrines of devils that have infiltrated our churches. Right. Amen. True. We're no longer the lighthouse in the middle of a storm. Right. We've become a pathetic joke to many people in the world and without any respect. Why? Because they keep God out of the church. Come on, brother. They got rid of the old time, old, old fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Yes, sir. Called it condemnation. You Said you don't have to live right. You can live any way you want to. You yeah, just keep planting the seed. Uh -huh. You're fixing to reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. We've been turned, our church has been turned into more, no more than some lifeless, spiritless, godless club. Yeah. Right. Or entertainment center. Yeah. Yeah. Where people go to be entertained. Right. Some places even charging tickets. Right. Money for tickets now. That's right. Super Bowl parties. Yeah. Oh, what happened to the places that Jesus said, My house shall be called a house of prayer? I told you this last week. I don't think you was here, Brother Bill. Maybe you was here. Maybe I said it Tuesday night. We're so worried about having prayer in school. We should be. Right. We're so concerned about being able to pray in a restaurant. We should be. Right. Don't seem like you can get a handful of people concerned enough to pray in church. All right, brother. <laughs> and you get rid of prayer, and you get rid of the Spirit of God, and you get rid of old-fashioned conviction, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Right. You're in trouble. When you get rid of the Word of God, you're in trouble. Amen. We're no longer a house of power or a house of horror. Oh, tell it. And you'll see it come October. Right. We'll turn our churches into haunted houses so we can draw the crowd. Right. God have mercy. Amen. Amen. A church that is so spiritually blind and spiritually stupid that she can't see the difference between light and darkness. Yeah. She can't see the difference between righteousness and and ungodliness. Come on. She can't see the difference between the power of God and the power of the occult. Right. Amen. That's it, brother. You got it. Oh. Come on, brother. Right up the road here in the month of October, they'll have this big, scary production. The pastor will be in a coffin and the choir will be dressed up like zombies. When you mix the godly with the ungodly, you come up with strange fire. Amen. Fire that was never intended to be offered upon the altar of God. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. No longer a house of power. My, my, my. It's like over there in the book of Revelation, the third chapter, the 14th verse, when he spoke to the church of the Laodiceans. Running around, thought they had everything. Jesus wasn't even there. He's outside knocking on the door. Amen. Ask them to come in. Brother Billy, you preaching a message this morning. Don't sound like we got much hope. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Here's your hope. If my people, are which are called by my name, humble. will humble themselves. Amen. Right. If they'll pray. Seek. If they'll seek my face. If they'll turn from their wicked ways. You mean God's people have some wicked ways? You better believe it. Yes, sir. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Come on. Then he says his eyes will be open. Yeah. And his ears will be attentive. He will hear the prayers made in that place. What place? The place where they hit their knees and begin to cry out to God. Yes, Forgive us. Come on. The Bible says in Psalms 126 and 5, and I'm closing, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. All right. Oh, isn't that good? Amen. Amen. If we'll hit our knees and begin to repent, it's not too late. Right. It's not too late. Amen. If we begin to cry out, God, forgive this nation. Yes. If we'll have enough conviction when we go in the voting booth to not vote because somebody's going to take a little food stake from us. Mm -hmm. Somebody 
posted that this week. They were actually they were trying to. I don't even know why in the world they got into politics. I didn't even want to post uh -huh. about. I posted about something else. Yeah. But I can't vote for Romney because he's going to cut the food stamps. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to vote for Obama. Well, yeah, sure, go ahead. Mm. Let him kill our babies. Yeah. Let him say gay marriage is okay, but as long as you keep your food stamps. Mm. Amen. Right. I got news for you. Whoever winds up in power, if they don't do something about the crazy spending that's going on, if somebody don't do something about Medicare and Medicaid, you ain't even had no Medicare and Medicaid. Because they're spending more money than what they got. Social Security, too. Social Security, yeah. Somebody's going to have to do something. Amen. Somebody's going to have to quit living so high on the hog and tighten the belt. Right. What I'd love to see is I'd love to see a president that cuts the wages of the Congress. Amen. I'd love to see a president who cuts his own salary. Yes. Instead of seeing people laid off and poverty getting higher and higher and, and the poor people suffering more, I'd like to see Congress cut back and tighten the belt. Amen? I'd like to see the president come out and say, you know what? I didn't get this position for the money. I'm going to take half my pay cut. I'm going to cut half my pay. I ain't going to take half what the previous president did. Oh, but good luck for that. Amen? Yes, sir. Good luck with that. Yeah. If there's such a thing. <laughs> exactly. If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. Yes, sir. I borrowed that from Brother Bill. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. See, you've been planting unrighteousness. You've been reaping unrighteousness. Yeah. <laughs> you've been planting wickedness. You've been reaping wickedness. Right. Start planting yeah. some righteous seed. Amen. Start planting some good seed. Yes. Start planting some seeds of faith. Right. Start planting some godly seeds. Mm -hmm. Then you can reap from some of the godly stuff Amen. that you plant. If you don't like what you're growing, change the seed that you're planting. Right. Amen. Right. It ain't that hard to figure out. Well, what's the answer? What can we do? Mm. Just start living right. Amen. Just start following Jesus. Right. He's the only answer. He's the only leader we need. Amen. Come on. He's the only leader we need. Then let all the rest of us follow the leader. Right. Amen. Let's let Jesus do the leading. Amen. Let's hit our knees and ask God to forgive this nation, to, to begin to deal with the hearts of our leaders. Let's, let's, deal, let's, let's ask God to deal with the church as we know it today so that the church will begin to plant good things again. So that the church will begin to plant righteousness again. So that the church will begin to plant godly seed again. Yes. And whenever you change what you're planting, you'll change what you're reaping. Yes, sir. Amen. True. Change what you're sowing. Check your seed. Well, let me see here. Yes. That's some bad seed I've been planting. Get rid of that. Come on. Let me find out what the good seed is. Yes. Amen. And let's start planting some of this. In the parable where the sower went out to sow, you know what he sowed? The Word of God. Mm. Oh, and then it came 30, 60, and 100 for good fruit. If you don't like what you reap it, change what you're sowing. Oh, hallelujah. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You must realize today that what you plant today, sooner or later, will grow up. Amen? Yes. No doubt about it. Amen. Listen to this. Talking about Eunice and Timothy and his grandmother Lois and all of that. How you affect the lifestyle that you live and the seed that you plant comes up in your youngins. We've quoted from this before, but I'll give it to you again this morning as we leave because I like it so much. I don't know who wrote it, but they were inspired. Grandfather smoked and had a taste for booze. Next thing you know, granddaddy's son did too. And when that boy had children of his own, addiction was the only seed he had sown. Next verse says he had a special name for every man, for anyone that wasn't just like him. His children used the words they heard from dad. If they're not just like we are, we don't like that. The course says pass it on, pass it down. We all leave more than a headstone in the ground. Pass it on and at the end, will you leave them all your love or all your sin? You can make it right or wrong. Pass it on. You reap what you sow. True. 
And if you don't like what you reap and change what you're sowing. Exactly. Hallelujah. Someone else has something this morning before we go.